Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related, but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? Sometimes sharing what you love can be so healing for yourself and the person on the receiving end. Today's episode is about reconnecting to ourselves, tuning out the noise to focus on what matters, and cultivating that self-trust. My guest, Jerry Correa, shares how candle making helped her find her way back to herself and reclaim her power. Jerry is the owner of Apothecary. She started as a project manager for most of her career until 2020, when she decided to pursue Apothecary full-time. APG started as a side hustle in 2018, which sprang from a place of depression. She was searching for a medium she could create within, but also an alternative to explore self-care. She had been working so much and was feeling disheartened by how her days looked like. 2020 was a year that truly taught her to pause, to appreciate what she has, and it gave her the time and space to grow apothecary. Each product is made with gratitude and good intentions. And making candles was ultimately her healing process in reconnecting to what matters to her and recovering from burnout. In today's episode, Jerry shares how she felt disconnected in her corporate job and didn't have time for self-care. How the name Apothecary came to be, her appreciation for candles and how her father inspired her to create them, the beauty of community and how her candles started to spread some light in dark times. Her process in creating different fragrances and the memories behind each of them. On letting go, trusting the process and timing and so much more. Come join our conversation. Hi, Jerry. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's such a pleasure to be able to interview you, to get to know a little bit about your story And I know briefly, a couple of years ago, you were in a bit of a tough spot. You were kind of stuck at a job that you like, but not so much. And you managed to create something out of this. And now in turn, you're helping others kind of embrace the moment of pause and self-care. So tell us who you are. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Hi, my name is Jerry. I like long walks on the beach. Uh, I'm kidding. I you can't even go to beach these days. But um, <laughs> I love long yeah. walks on a beach. <laughs> yeah, I like just long walks now. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm Jerry. Um, so APG really came out of a place of vulnerability. Um, as you mentioned in 2018, I had a, I was in a it was in a really hard spot uh, mentally. I was working in a job uh, as a project manager for, um, I'm not going to say the name, but like for a not-for-profit. And it was, uh, it was really cool. I was working with really amazing brands. I got to know a lot of like directors and I, you know, presented to a bunch of executives. Like it was to, to the outside, it was like, wow, you're like doing cool stuff, you know? But inside it got to a point where I just felt so defeated and like stuck, like really stuck uh, to the point where, you know, I, I kept asking myself, like, is this really what you want to spend the next like five years doing? You know, I was already like basically three years in the job and yeah, like it just, I didn't feel like I was growing and that's mm-hmm. such a really hard place to be. And it takes a lot of courage to acknowledge that. And especially like with living in the city, like you can get really comfortable with the you know with the normal everyday life and you know having to pay your bills or you know have that security like I had benefits I had the full-time salary like it was you know it was my parents dream for me yeah. um <laughs> but yeah like APG really came from a place of um it really came from a place of me like reclaiming my creativity back 
um, because I felt like I gave so much to this job creatively, as well as like, you know, I would work from 9 a.m. to like 7 p.m. But like, sometimes I would work on the weekends or like, and there was just so many things I was accountable for that I felt like my own life, um, I felt slipped, like I felt like I had no, like, how can I say this? I didn't feel like I had a grip on my life anymore. It was just like, I worked, I slept, I ate and I repeated the same thing over and over again. I did, and I would get home and I would just feel so tired. And um, yeah, like it was, it was a really dark place. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, like I, you know, the body kind of knows how to like, it knows survival instincts. So in a way, like how APG came to be was like, I actually started taking like workshops on like natural makeup um perfume like mixing all natural like essential oils and and that was something that I did on the side but really this journey started way before that like I took environmental studies in university and a lot of the jobs I've had have always been very like environmentally centered so does that make any sense environmental centered environment centered <laughs> yeah I think that makes and, sense for me <laughs> yeah and one of my favorite jobs so I was kind of reminiscing at this point in my in my career, I was like, man, I really hate what I do. And I mean, everyone around me can tell that I hated it. <laughs> like, Which is such really. a such a huge thing to be able to admit that because you can still be yeah. good at your job. But yeah, yeah, it acknowledging takes, the disconnect. Oh, for sure. Like it got to a point where um, people around me would notice how, like, I guess, um, how much I've like just kind of sunken in, you know, or like have really like just you could tell I was just depleted. Um, and so going back to like the journey, uh, I at this point in my career, I was like, what was it that I enjoyed about each of my experience with my jobs? You know, like what what did I like out of it? Because I was kind of getting in this headspace of like I can't do this anymore. I need mm -hmm. to like figure out what I like. And like, how can I enjoy life again? How can I enjoy or being proud of something, you know? Like, yeah, I was doing some really cool stuff. I planned a really crazy event and um, just out of like, you know, out of uh, privacy and stuff, I'm not gonna mention names, but you know, I, I was doing really cool stuff and I just didn't feel it. I didn't feel proud of it, if that makes any sense. And mm -hmm. yeah, like I, 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 there was this job I had when I was 25 and it was in Mississauga and it was for a um, natural CPG company. So I learned so many cool aspects of like these small, like these small food companies that were organic, natural, like I learned their business practices and like really got to know these brands and felt so connected to that, you know, and I really enjoyed that job. <laughs> And the reason why I got out of that job was because there just wasn't, you know, it, it was one of those things where there wasn't any growth for me anymore there, but I took what I did and I learned so much from it and got so many good connections, but it also opened me up to an industry of wellness. And um, yeah, I really, really like enjoyed that. I love the products that they were doing and I love how each one of those brands had their story and it came from like families who started these companies from nothing you know and and now they're like working with distributors to put their food in front of families and, and that really like resonated with me and so I've always been like into natural products and with APG I, I literally it was like a dream it really was a dream I woke up one day after doing these workshops and I was like why don't I just like make perfume oils so I did and then I woke up and I woke my partner up at seven in the morning and I was like, I'm going to start, I'm going to start a business and it's going to, I'm going to make products. I'm just going to make natural perfume oils. That's what it started as. That was the first, like with every business journey, it changes, right? Like you adapt to those changes. And anyways, long story short, I woke up from a dream and I was like, I'm going to start a business because I can't find any perfume that like, that like, um, that speaks to me. A lot of it was at, at Sephora was like targeted like to a certain demographic. And I just didn't feel like I fit in that. And it didn't feel like personal to me. And I also mm -hmm. felt like these scents were like, oh, they smell the same, like not to be like no shade. 
but a lot of them yeah. are just like there's strong notes of the same stuff and so I woke him up and I was like hey I'm gonna start a business like it's gonna be called blooms and dew <laughs> it was the first name of it and he literally was like very groggly this guy has been in like advertising for years my partner's been in advertising for years so he woke up like sleepily and was like that name is lame <laughs> like, that name is lame just call it a pump jerry and then goes back to sleep Wait, he like, just gave you that name on the, yeah, like, he, calf grog. Oh. He went back to sleep. He's like, oh, that name is lame. Like, you should call it a Papa Jerry. And goes back to sleep. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, that's genius. I'm going to use it. So, and it was kind of exactly, like, I wanted, in my vision or in my dream, I was like, I had this, I had a dream of this perfume. And it had jasmine, ylang ylang, mm-hmm. and that's actually the ingredients for my sexy time candle, um, yeah. and my and my other perfumes. But anyways, long story short, he came up with that. And I was like, that's perfect because that's kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to have an apothecary. Yeah, <laughs> so he was like, call an apothecary your name. <laughs> and that's like the personal touch. It's kind of the heart of what you do. Yeah. I can't believe he just synthesized it in such a beautiful it, way. It, I can't make this stuff up like he like it it kind of felt so right it was one of those like magical moments where yeah. like you wake up from a dream and then you're like okay and you commit to like you wake up I mean everyone wakes up and they have like I don't know if you do but like you have those like Galileo moments where you're like, we did it but it kind of just like in, it was like so insane and I was like oh can I have something so um and I sketched it out too I always sketch all my ideas out first like uh, when it starts to conceptualize, I, I mm-hmm. just write it down. And I think like, that's what really helped, you know, when I went to therapy was writing things down. It helps compartmentalize like your thoughts. And there's a lot that goes on in my noggin, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of how the name came about. And um, yeah, that's how Papa Jerry was, I guess, born from a fever dream. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And I love how you talk about, you mentioned growth a couple of times, how you had opportunities, they were great, and you felt it was time to grow. And it's just, you know, it's such a dynamic thing, because we think that maybe in your business, like you also shared how you started with um, uh, perfume oils, and yeah, that, perfume that was oils. the way to go. And now you're like specializing in more stuff that you're experimenting with. And I think allowing ourselves to do that, it's so powerful. And I want to know more about why candles to begin with, because I know your story with how your dad also has his ritual. Can you talk a yeah. little bit about that? For sure. So I think I'm so grateful for it. Like it really, if you started with perfume oils, I think I tell like those that are close to me know that. And I think that really helped me kind of build a scent profile. And it really helped me understand like fragrances way more and what blends go together. So I'm super grateful for that. But at the time, like it just, you know, when things don't feel right to like release things, yeah. um, timing really is everything. It really is. And I, through this journey, I've learned to appreciate that and not like rush the process. But um, how candles, 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 candles came about was um so just a little backstory my dad loves candles like he loves them and throughout my life um he's worked like early on he worked a lot of midnight shifts and he was actually the first person I know that used candles for leisure and he would light them up after like a long shift watch tv and eat leftovers and you know I would ask him like why is it that you like candles so much you know and it makes sense because throughout my life too sometimes like there are these smells of burning candles um just in different points like and there wouldn't be a candle burning and he said it because it reminds me of my mom which is his which is my great grandmother his grandmother Mm -hmm. and he like he lost her at a young age when they moved here to Canada so in a way candles remind him of her of her presence and it comforted him because like she was someone that really like he really he really loved her and she really like he always says like oh like <laughs> he was always like oh I was her favorite grandson <laughs> yeah yeah so throughout different points in our lives like when we moved to a new home we would smell like candles burning and it wouldn't be like he wouldn't have lightened it it was just there and it was always like he would always be like oh my mom is here or 
Mm-hmm. And yeah, like it's just something also that he just did. He said, I love candles because it reminds me of her and it makes me feel comfortable. And that really like touched me. And every birthday, like holiday, Christmas, he'd only ask for like one thing, get me a good candle enough. Mm-hmm. He would say, get me a good candle enough. Don't give me like, don't give me like, you know, a shirt or socks, or just give me a good candle enough. So I um I would give him a candle from the usual bath and body work. <laughs> um I would get him like it I, I think I gave him like I gifted him like 15 candles before I started <laughs> making and funny enough I came across a post from uh another maker called uh her name is Clara but she goes by uh her company's called Gold Apothecary and she was like selling a whole candle kit like I think it was before the pandemic so I've always wanted to like make candles just to you know make something specifically for my dad um and it just became available for some reason like it was I was already like experiment, experimenting with scents and I didn't like she didn't feel right to release them yet so I I experimented with this starter kit and yeah the rest I guess is like history like I just started making candles and that was the first Christmas in 20 I'd say either 2018 where I, I gave my family members personal gifts of candles and that's kind of where I kept it first with just like my friends and my family it a lot of them really loved it and, and they were actually like hey can I get more of this after they yeah. finished them so <laughs> yeah so your that's- candles they're also homemade they're plant-based soy wax yeah urban and I don't know how to pronounce <laughs> P-H-T-H, how do you oh, phthalate, 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 it's a phthalate, phthalate yeah. fragrances. <laughs> yeah. Tell me why that was important to go into the process. Um, first and foremost, like I don't like ingredients I can't pronounce. I mean, phthalate free, a lot of people know what phthalates are. <laughs> I know. Except it's for a hard me, word. I'm ESL. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant like I, I didn't want to like introduce ingredients that I didn't know of. Um mm-hmm. And it's so important to me to source these myself because I'm making them. I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to make harmful things to like, I don't want to bring that in my home, you know, or like make things that could potentially harm me. So it was super important for me to source like ingredients that I know of and I know were um, natural as well as like body safe. <laughs> that makes any mm-hmm. sense. So yeah. I'm saying if that makes any sense, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, so like it's super important to me because one of the main things is also I wanted to keep the candles as sustainable as possible. So a lot of people don't know like paraffin wax is actually like the source of that is crude oil and it's it's a non-renewable source. So it's actually like terrible for the environment. And it kind of turns your borders black. Like <laughs> a friend of ours was saying they bought some candles and it turned their boogers wax. And one of oh the main ingredients was paraffin. Yeah, so uh, one way I was like, hey, well, I wanted a clean burning candle. So soy wax is plant-based and the place I source my wax from, they do it ethically and they don't like, they don't test on animals. They, it's all renewable, renewable. And as well as like, again, I keep mentioning that ethically source. I really did my research yeah. on each of my suppliers um, because, you know, like if I was going to start a business, I wanted to make sure that it was not only authentic, but as well as like something I can make and I know won't harm me because I wouldn't want that to the people that I love. You know, I wouldn't mm-hmm. want to give you a candle that can harm you. And that's a lot of the things with like big corporations, you know, and factories, like eat a lot. I find like a lot, the quality of it. Um, yeah, it's capitalism, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and I like, really, it, it speaks so much to you about you and how you're starting because it's from a place of, love and care (laughs) it might sound cheesy but like you care for the suppliers you get it from you care for the people on the receiving end as much as the process and it's beautifully reflected well it's it's like you know when you want to give my mom always taught me when you give something give something wholeheartedly and so that's kind of how I approached making these candles um again no no shade to like corporations like they're clearly doing something right because they have so much money but um (laughs) <laughs> I want it to be again as authentic as possible and eventually I know like as the business grows like there are some things that you've got to let go of control wise but mm-hmm. what was really important to me with these ingredients is that not only do I know where they come from but I know that the people that receive them won't 
be harmed, if that makes any sense. I mean, when you're lighting a flame, um, again, I put like warning labels under them as well as like, I just want something clean burning and something that they can feel good to have in their home. So, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> accessible and smell good. How do you conceptualize? Like, do you think about the smells coming together? How, what is the process? Um, okay, yeah, so here's, I love, like, this is actually one of my favorite parts of candle making is coming up with the candles themselves. And yeah. they really start from a mood or like a memory that I've had. Like, for example, um, summertime, I had the Malona candle. And that reminded me of like the popsicle bars that my mom would bring home from like We Trust or like Nation. Um, you know, everyone, I think a lot of Asians know the Malona. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually one of my mentors would like have those in the summer would buy me an extra one, you know, when we were working at like, um, at our, at the vintage shop and like, yeah. it, it just, it reminded me of a place of comfort and I love honeydew. I love it so much. So I was like, why not have this in a candle? And that's one of the things too, I've noticed with like, um, other candles that I've seen in the past is that they they don't really represent like a mood or like a, a moment, I guess. Like a lot of them have like, you know, sometimes it's just like lavender and sage, you know, that would be the name of it. And how I conceptualize the name, I, I wanted it to trigger like, I wanted it to be more sensory, you know? So like Malona or like, um, I remember with the peach candle, uh, I found myself saying like, ah, oh, that's just PG with every news that was coming out. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's, everything's just peachy, you know, everything's just peachy, you know, everything burns. Um, so <laughs> that's how I came up with that. And, and a lot of it too is just bringing inspiration from like the season and the elements of it. So um, for example, with winter, um, I had an evergreen candle and evergreen, what I envisioned when I like was coming up with the scent, was like I wanted to feel like you're walking through a, a you know, a tree farm and you're chopping down your tree. So I wanted to be very like, and I also love the song Evergreen by Barbara Streisand. Um, <laughs> that was one of my like karaoke songs growing up. So <laughs> yeah, it really does trigger like memories of mine. Like, it's just something I wanted to share too. And, and I hope that, you know, people can feel that, that same sense. Like when whatever I put into the candle, they can feel that like, oh, okay, this reminds me of something that I've lived through. You know, so yeah, yeah very intentional. Kind of, I know yeah. I, I need to get your Melona one because my husband loves the honeydew <laughs> Melona. He goes crazy, which also means we're probably gonna buy lots of the ice cream and the candle <laughs> if he's smelling it all the time. <laughs> oh, it's so it's honestly one of my favorites. Um it's it's one of those things where I was like, Oh, should I keep the season? I was like, I think I'm gonna keep it all year round. It's it's yeah. just it's, it's such a feel-good scent, you know, it's super fresh smelling too. And like yeah, yeah I love it. <laughs> do people do people start requesting for certain smells and moods after they purchase your candle like can you make this for me especially people closest to you <laughs> uh yes my dad is number one actually he would be like he was telling me like can you make like a really can you make bigger candles like 30 ounces and I'm like dad I can't do that like I can do it for you but that's a lot of wax you know <laughs> um and he was actually telling me make a make a lavender candle and I was like I already have one and um, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's that one. Like, he would, he loves candles. Like, so he would always yeah. put suggestions. He like, oh. like I think one time he called me and he was like, enough, you should make like a um, you should make like a a lavender and orange candle. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Is he like the official tester before it goes out to anyone? Does he get the, like the first sniff? <laughs> Yeah, he actually does. Um, he gets like, a, I, I gift him candles all the time, like now more than ever. But it's funny that you asked that because I, I actually, for Christmas, I made him like a really big candle and yeah. it said like for my dad and he refuses to light it because it's so special to him. And my mom was telling me like, she would show me pictures now and she's like, he still hasn't lighted it. Like, and it's now, oh. <laughs> yeah, he, he really likes the one, but um yeah, he always requests it. I have people that request it all the time too, like different things. And they're like, hey, you should make, you make like this or can you trust me? And <laughs> it can be a lot, but I, I really enjoy like listening to everyone's like creative input. And, and I do put that into consideration. I know like I asked my Instagram followers, like, 
what reminds you of spring, right? And someone put like lilacs. I was already thinking of lilacs uh, for like my recent candle, lilac haze. So I was like, all right, I'll just put lilacs in it, like violets and raspberry. That's the blend. (laughs) How do you, I guess that's like super, super subjective in the creative process. how How do you know when you just got it? I imagine you go through so many tests. Like, how do you uh, yeah. tweak? <laughs> <laughs> um, again, like you probably, like, I wish I could show you like all the like test burns I've done, but yeah. it it kind of like I make the I mix the fragrance first before I put it in the wax, just so I can like um get a sense of it. I don't know. It's it's really hard to explain that like what just works and what doesn't because again, like I mentioned, um, everything literally is a journey, and with every like concept I come up with for a candle it probably had like five before that mm. um and it just I don't know it, it really is intuitive as yeah. cheesy as that does sound like it really is intuitive like okay this works and you kind of like honestly therapy has really helped me so much <laughs> um really listen to that little voice because we go through a lot of self-doubt and especially as a business owner you go through not only self-doubt uh, you know, there are many moments in this journey where I've asked myself, like, can I do this? Like, can I, can I keep going? And there's a little voice in us that says, like, uh, yes, you can. And you just gotta mm-hmm. like listen to it and amplify it a lot more. So, yeah, much as I can say that, like, it's super intuitive when I come up with the blends. Also, like, I, I get my partner to test a lot of it too. Yeah, so he's yeah, yeah. also like the secret, like. The secret um, candle quality control. Quality sounds better than sniffer. <laughs> secret sniffer. <Yeah. laughs> he's my quality control, so I always like go like, "Hey, can you smell this? Like, what do you think of this?" And he would. He's so like blunt with me. He'd be like, mm, "I don't like it." Or like, "Uh, oh, my favorite." Or you know, when I know he goes, "Okay, that's good," then I know it's like ready to go. But again, like we've had conversations where like, "I think you're wrong. I'm just gonna put it out anyway." So. Again, really listening to yourself is important and sticking with that, sticking with your vision. Yeah, yeah. I love that you important. brought I love that you brought that up. And especially, I know at the beginning, before we jumped into the podcast, we talked about experimenting. You know, you just dye your hair pink as an example <laughs> and all these things. And when it comes to business, it can be so vulnerable putting something that you love out there. How has that journey been for you? Because I think, did the business take off during the pandemic at a time where things were, you know, so up in the air? What were some lessons that came up? The challenges and the lessons I've learned through this has been, it, it's some of the lessons I will take with me for the rest of my life. And to launch during a pandemic, you know, a lot of people would say you're crazy. And truly, I can't reiterate it enough. Like timing really is everything, you know? I started this journey in 2018, but I really didn't start it till 2020. You know, that's when I started to put them out there. And when I decided to like release them on Instagram, I didn't expect to like really get any orders. I just wanted to, it came from a place of wanting to help out and wanting to give. And, you know, when you put yourself out there, like there were so many times where like I would edit the, the candles and I was like, oh, this isn't good enough. Like, no one's going to fight and then you get to a point where like just release it you know just release any anxiety of it like the worst that can happen is you know no one buys it and that's okay and being comfortable with that that's okay is um it came from a place of truly doing the work doing the self-work of that um and like I mentioned like it came from a place of wanting to give back And this was during the time where a lot of things were at the forefront, a lot of issues, a lot of racial issues. And I just wanted to raise money for grassroots organizations that were here in Toronto. And I couldn't just like sit by and not contribute to that, you know, not contribute to these causes and not, and just let it go again. You know, like time and time again, we've seen so many things you know, so many racial injustices in front of us. And, you know, you can make a post about it or you can, you know, do something about it. Mm -hmm. And I chose at that moment to, you know, give back. And 
when you give back, it kind of like, it's kind of releasing, um, when you come from an authentic place, I mean, the worst that can happen again, as I mentioned, is it doesn't reciprocate that. And I think with therapy, what I've learned is that you can't always expect people to reciprocate those feelings back. All you can really do is control how you get or control how you feel. And knowing what I know now, um, yeah, it came back twofold <laughs> and I didn't mm -hmm. expect that. And it was such a fulfilling and an amazing feeling. And truthfully, I just wanted to get rid of inventory that I had. I, I didn't expect this to really go the way it has. And yeah, it's such a fulfilling journey. And it, the lessons I've learned is truly timing and patience and really trusting your gut and sticking to your vision, sticking mm -hmm. to like, sticking to your vision and sticking to your goals and sticking to what you believe in personally, you know, and your, your personal ethics. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. Who's saying if that makes any sense, but it's true. And it's hard <laughs> it's, to like, yeah. it's hard to convey that um, sometimes because, you know, yeah, <laughs> it, it's hard to communicate that. <laughs> Are you ready to create space for ease and alignment? I've created a free starter guide to help you go from frazzle to focus. It's a guide for the overwhelmed go-getter who's eager to find more ease, clarity, and alignment in our lives, so you can quiet the noise and strengthen your connection within. After all, we can't align what we don't know is misaligned. Simply grab your free copy at wholeandunleashed.com slash guide. We put so much pressure on ourselves to want something to be successful that yeah. I, I notice for myself, I get in my own way, like not wanting to release something because I think it's not good enough. But I think it was such a great opportunity for you because you wanted to do something and you were able to detach from the outcome because you're like, yeah. I'm here to give back. So if this works great, if not, and that takes the pressure out of yourself. And then it really in is turn. Really nice. Yeah, that opened up for so much more. How did it feel yeah. once the order started to flow in and people were <laughs> loving them? How did that feel that it was working out? Uh, it felt kind of surreal, I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, for years, my friends were telling me like, you should sell these, you should like sell these, you should really sell these candles, they smell great. Or like, how can I buy more from you? And I was always like, I'll give them to you. Like, don't worry, like, I, I love you, I'll give it to you. It's my way of like showing, it was my love language, you know? And um. Yeah, like getting those orders in from like people that weren't my friends felt really surreal. Like I can't describe the feeling, but it just felt very like holy shit. Like this is yeah. like I can't believe I have an order from someone I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like nice, you know. And then that order became two orders, and then that person ordered again, and they told their friends, and then like you know, and they're like, oh, I heard about you through this, and then or and then all of a sudden it's like well, I, I have business <laughs> yes. and I got to buy more supplies. <laughs> and then once those supplies ran out, you know, that you got more requests, but I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I, they want more. So it's just like, it kind of just grew that way. And I was like, all right, time to get serious about this and time to get a website <laughs> <laughs> and time to talk to my Nina. <laughs> about Dante. Right. What an extraordinary journey. Has it been a year, a complete year or not yes. yet? You're close. To, it yeah. has, it has been a complete year. I would say. Yes. Very close congratulations. To, okay. <laughs> on you. the first by, year of a pot of Jerry. Thank you. It, I think by the time um, this podcast launches, it would be my one year. So, oh. and what a journey it's been. It's, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. And I feel like every career opportunity I had, and like all the jobs that like I've had ha in the past or the moments that I've like, you know, I've lost jobs even, it all led to like this moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful for every experience I've had because I feel like have I had not those experiences, I don't think I'd be at the place I'd be at now, you know? And really putting yourself out there, you know, and not expecting anything in return. Um, it does a lot for for not only your mental health but like for yourself you know it's taking off that like pressure on yourself and really like going back inwards in a good way you know like feeling more true to yourself 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing because I know yeah. the process has also been very therapeutic for you in coming back to yourself. We talk about, yeah. you know, reconnecting to our inner selves and this entire journey. Yes, it became a business, but it also allowed you to reconnect to what matters and how, how was the process of that, of coming back? To, reclaiming myself <laughs> yeah reclaiming I, yourself I, I feel like with APG I definitely reclaim that you know going back to 2018 like that was when I woke up that morning I I said to myself like I'm gonna do this I'm reclaiming my creativity back and I'm gonna make mm -hmm. something I'm just gonna do it and yeah like it's it's been very um empowering you know throughout my life I as Asians we've been told like you know, to have success, but like to get it in a way that doesn't cause too much attention to you, you know, or like do it in a way that like is right. You know, my mom would always mm -hmm. say to you, like, you know, don't answer back at your boss or like, you know, just work harder and you can work harder and people will see that, you know, but there's something very empowering with like reclaiming that, reclaiming your space, reclaiming like your career back you know and like really saying like I'm gonna be my own boss and that's I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna try it and you know whatever happens from it so be it and that's all part of the journey that's life <laughs> yeah yeah and I appreciate you also sharing about how you know 2018 was when the idea started spark sparking and then it was coming into place and then it didn't truly take life until later and i think oftentimes when we have ideas and when we want to try new things out we want it to be successful right away we want to push we want to do all those things so i yeah. appreciate you sharing about the journey yeah. of it didn't feel right then yeah you know like i mean success is great you know but truthfully like i just wanted to share like what i know what i've learned and I just wanted to share good products that made me feel good, you know? And yeah. I hope that like, I think, um, but I hope that like translates through, through my products. And I think it has, so. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you have some new fragrances coming up, new projects, new products. Can you talk a little bit about that? A sneak peek? Yeah, sure. So um, yeah, so I just launched my spring collection um, and it's, called spring awakening i was really inspired i love spring spring spring's one of my favorite seasons other than winter um but with spring what was really in, what really inspired it or like the the thought process behind it was spring break um but like my high school spring break so during that time like i would <laughs> i would just lounge at home which is what we're all doing you know we're all at home we're in lockdown number like five five thousand um <laughs> yes. lockdown number three <laughs> So like, I, I just thought about like, you know, what I did when I was in high school and what, like, what reminds me of spring. So, um, fresh laundry is one of them. So my mom always made sure that like, I, that laundry was done during when I was home. And <laughs> I remember like hanging them up with her during the day and cause she would take days off, right? Like, um, for my brother and I during our spring breaks, break, yeah, breaks, <laughs> um, and so I remember like just hanging laundry with her and that to me is spring. Um, another memory is Fruity Loops. So my brother loved sugar cereals and um, I would like remember in spring break, we could sleep in and we would eat cereal and watch plate during the day. And that was like, again, a memory and I needed to put that in a candle. And then the other one, again, Lilac was inspired by um, that one I, I made like through my Instagram. I asked people like, what, what were like some spring scents that you, that remind you of spring? And lilacs was a big one. So I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta like put that in a candle because you gotta give the people what they want. <laughs> <laughs> a collective shared experience in a candle. Yeah. So, um, and the last one is um, Fruity Loops. Oh my God, I do so many candle collections. Like it's kind of crazy. Lilac Haze. And uh, milk and honey, um, milk and honey. I I had this candle concept since December, and I really loved 
when I think of milk and honey, I think of fresh beginnings. I think of mothers and their babies. Mm -hmm. And I think of just this mirage of a beautiful land <laughs> of milk and honey. So, and I think of fresh tea and having tea with my friends. So I, I thought about that and that's kind of how I came up with that kind of thing as well. As well as like reclaiming that back from like that book, Milk and Honey. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That's such a beautiful experience that you're kind of putting in your candle and energetically. I think that intention really translates with whatever product you get. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, like I definitely that's what that's really what inspired um the spring collection was just memories and really spring break and just lounging around during spring break when I was in high school. <laughs> like, yeah. And just doing normal everyday things with my family. So mm -hmm. those were that was the inspiration. That's the inspiration for a lot of the things I put out. Um yeah, I, I think definitely like I'm really proud of this collection um and I really want that to translate through especially now that we're home I really wanted people to find comfort um even if it's just simple as like, like lighting a candle and they can hopefully like go back to a memory they've had back in their their memory land <laughs> yeah yeah and strong is such a strong smell is such a strong way to bring back memories it's such a it's just, you know, something about a smell, it can just bring you back whether you want it or not. Yeah, for sure. Um, sorry, just going back on the milk and honey, like, I, I really, don't get me wrong, the book is great. <laughs> I just meant that, like, I wanted to have the, I just, when I think of spring, I think of milk and honey, I think of fresh milk and honey. And, yeah. you know, the bees are buzzing and <laughs> the flowers are in bloom. And I just needed to have those elements in this. Sorry, just wanted to read it yeah yeah totally. <laughs> can't wait to smell them i'm gonna order a bunch of honey uh, honey <laughs> order a bunch of candles from you oh my god so as your, <laughs> you're so sweet i also wanted to ask you as your business grows and i know you're getting busy and busier how do you make space for yourself oh my god um that's actually really hard because sometimes like when i make candles and this sounds really cheesy but i feel like i'm not working you know, mm. I, it's such a ritual to make candles. Um, it's such a ritual to burn them. So it's hard to find that balance. I'm not going <laughs> to lie, but it's necessary too. So how I find that balance is I, I make sure that I take like regular walks during the day. Um, I find time to play Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, yeah. And yeah, just things I, I didn't do before when I was working, um, you know, as a project manager. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah finding balance for sure it's it's definitely something I'm still working on um I will admit because I I just yeah making candles is so ritualistic it's such a wonderful practice and the process of it all like from pouring it to making sense to like you know even marketing it and taking photos like all of that is truly fun for me and that's mm -hmm. when I know I'm onto something not only that I love but I'm onto something right for yeah. myself yeah um, yeah it's you have no idea like how empowering it feels to say like I truly love what I do now and I've done big projects I've worked with like big companies and nothing feels as fulfilling as this mm, I yeah. can feel that energy thank you for sharing that with us <laughs> <For sure. laughs> and also I wanted to add because you enjoy what you're doing and it it doesn't feel draining. So even if you your self-care happens when you're doing it, when you're doing the work you love. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something completely different carved out. Oh, of it. for sure. For sure. One of the challenging things too, like from this journey that I've learned is like letting go. Um, because I'm so like deep in the process. Like I remember over the holidays, like I, I had like a I had a lot of orders like from the holidays, as normal as a lot of people like do, but um yeah, I, I had way more orders than I was used to. I actually hired like some, hired a part-timer to come in yeah. and help me. And honestly, it was like so hard to give up that control because I was just, it was only me for so long. And like, I also like hired my little brother to help and it was really hard to let go of that control. And mm -hmm. I truly like, I don't know if you ever saw like, 
karate have you ever seen karate kid where like um mr miyagi got got him to like wipe the car down or like um basically clean his house <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i would get the like not only my my part-time employee and my little brother like they would just they would do the most easy things like whip the jars or like put the labels on print labels or like you know easy stuff and I would just I would do all the scents myself and it got to like week two where I was like okay clearly we're not putting out fast enough so I need someone to help me so when I I kind of like felt like they're ready and that's when I was like oh this is so hard to like let go yeah and that was one of the I, that's one of the challenges I just want to that was one of the challenges of the business is like letting go and like acknowledging that you need help and accepting that help that's powerful that's powerful yeah. <laughs> I know it's something that I'm learning when I was like designing it was so hard to let go because it was easier to do it myself than yeah train someone which is not a very good mentality but <laughs> I I'm working on it I'm working on it so I totally understand <laughs> oh yeah it's so hard um because it's like your baby you know it's like this is something that you've like you put your heart and soul into and it's like to offload that on somebody else it's like are you worthy <laughs> oh, are you like yeah. yeah there's also like trust can I trust that the person might not do it the way I do it but still get the results that I need yeah that's something that and, comes up to me <laughs> oh yeah and honestly like letting go truly yeah. letting go of that and like getting that it they were great, by the way, like they, yeah. I, I would always tell them like, you're employee of the month, you're employee of the year. Um, and it, it was honestly like such a fresh breath of air to like be able to like stand back and like see the process um, through someone else. Yeah. And that was like, okay, cool. Like, I can do this. Like, this is, yeah. <laughs> I can, oh, you can do this. <laughs> I can share this. this. <laughs> You've got <Yeah>. this. <laughs> Well, thank yeah. you so much for sharing your story, your journey with us. I wanted to end this with some rapid fire questions. Yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's the best compliment you've ever received? Okay. Um, the compliments are so easy to accept sometimes, but one of the best comments I have compliments I've had was from a customer recently, actually. And she said, um, she told me that the products, like the products have changed her sense of smell. Um, it made her open to scents she didn't know she liked. <laughs> so that was like such a good comment. I actually was like, I, I shed like a little tear. I'm like, oh my God, that's so crazy. That like, you know, she said that she always liked like airier and more like airy, lighter scents, but uh, that my products introduced a more deeper sense. Like for mm -hmm. example, DTF has ginger and vetiver or vetiver. <laughs> Yeah. And she was like, I didn't know I, I liked them. Like I just, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just that her, my products opened her up to different elements of sense. And like, yeah, she's, she's a great person. <laughs> so beautiful. you should frame that. <laughs> yeah. Just it was, reminder when days get tough. <laughs> I actually teared up a bit. I'm like, well, I know. It was such a really nice compliment. I, I really, thank you. <laughs> um, a book that's changed your life. Oh my God, what, what age, like at what age? <laughs> um, <laughs> honestly, I find a lot of inspiration from botanical booklets, like botanical illustrations. Um, those really change, like those really inspire the book of APG for sure. So I would say those, mm -hmm. a lot of botanical um, booklets. I actually have one here too. I got this, um, it's a digital, it's called Vintage Botanical Illustrations and they're like mm -hmm. copyright any designer should oh, they ever get inspiration gorgeous. yeah so like I would always like I love them they're just so beautiful it and feels so really grounding helps. it is right and that's kind of like how I also approach scents too it's like if it grounds me then if I feel like a certain way when I smell it then I need to put I need to use it you know and mm -hmm. I need to like blend them so this book is really great um Another one that I always reference back to, so I would say yes, it changes, is Clio Way Car Talk. Um, I actually have it here too, because I know I just have it. I always reference it. Um, and it's so great because not only does it have like little poems and affirmations, but I find myself referencing back to it whenever I, I feel of a, a sense of self-doubt coming in. Mm. It, it's a really great book to remind yourself of like who you are 
why you started your journey and like, you know, to, to let go of that self-doubt and know that you've got this in life. You know? <laughs> Beautiful. Definitely adding yeah. those to my list. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, what does coming home mean to you? Um, coming home means to me to live authentically. Um, coming home to yourself, to your authentic self. Um, you know, home is where a place you feel comfortable. Home is a place that you feel like you can be your ultimate true self, right? And yeah, that's what coming home means to, me, to live authentically, to live with the people you choose and to live with yourself and be okay with that. <laughs> what would you like more of? Ooh, vaccine. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we can uh, hug everyone already. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, it's so funny. Like in life, we always want more of something, you know? And I think what this year has truthfully taught me is to um, have gratitude for what I already have. And so, you know, to want more, you're always chasing something. Whereas like to feel gratitude for what you have and what you have up until this point and the things you will have in the future I, I, I'm just so happy in living in the now. Um, mm. And truthfully, you can say with my whole heart that I'm content with that. I would love to have more, like, more hugs. One day, I haven't hugged my mom in a year, so I really miss, oh. I miss that. Um, yeah, I'd love to definitely have more vaccines that we can like, connect in person. And yeah. also, you know, we can live where we're not so fearful anymore. I guess that's I want more peace and love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Advice for younger self? Um, ooh, okay. I, my advice for my younger self is definitely to chill. I was so uptight when I was young. I was so like obsessed with being older and like growing up. And, you know, I didn't really like take in where I was at that time. So definitely is to chill. Um, <laughs> to... <laughs> You know, it's like that exam's not that serious. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, you don't have to do an all-nighter for like that essay. Like you're gonna be okay. Um, and definitely like know your boundaries. Uh, save money. <laughs> <laughs> save money. Uh, you don't need that shirt. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My, truthfully, my, my, my advice to my younger self would definitely be to chill and that you are enough. And that all the feelings that you're feeling, don't suppress it. And that it's valid. And to just mm -hmm. really embrace this growth and don't grow up, don't want to grow up so fast. Mm -hmm. That's something I wish I, I mean, I have no regrets in this life, but I really do wish that I, I didn't want to rush growing up. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when I was like 15, I wanted to be 18. Or like when I was 19, I wanted to be 21. I just wish I, really took in living at that age yeah in a way with your candles you're always transported back to those moments too so and that's timeless. definitely yeah that's kind of why I make them too it's like it it makes me kind of capture those memories that I I had and really like live in it again but in a way that I remember it and in a way that's like that feels good <laughs> Beautiful. Where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on Instagram at Apothecary. They can also find me on um, on www.apothecary.com. They can find me on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if they'll ever find me on TikTok because I'm still trying to learn it. <laughs> I honestly feel so old when I look at TikTok. I'm, I'm just like, Ooh. I, I wow. downloaded it. I had no idea how to sign up. Yeah, I think I needed a certain email, so I just stopped <laughs> one day. Uh, yeah, honestly, like I'm just getting used to reels. I feel like I have to do a whole storyboard for them. Like it's crazy how much time it takes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they can find me there. I'm really excited actually about some upcoming collaborations that I have. I can't really speak too much of it soon because it's still in it in the process of it, but um definitely some really cool brands that I'm partnering up with for APG. So I'm really excited about that. And nice. it, hopefully it launches by the time this podcast launches. Yes. Um, so if they, is there a newsletter people can sign up to so they get notified? 
when yeah, it happens? So it's actually something I am working on. Again, like I said, it's a whole process. Like, and one thing that I really have learned um, through this journey is to not rush it. I have an, it, like I have a, a newsletter that I'm making and it should be launching by June. <laughs> it's a nice. little while, nice. it's a ways away, but I, it has to be, it has to be in a way that's like, you know, that makes sense. And yeah, maybe, maybe sooner than that, but it's definitely going to launch very soon. But I, and I have it and I have like a list ready. So sign up for it and hopefully you won't regret it. <laughs> thank you so much, Jerry. It's been an honor to talk to you today and thank you for sharing your journey. Thank you. I hope, uh, I guess my last takeaway from this is I hope that like, people can really take the time for themselves if not with the candles just like in this life you know like really take the time for you and enjoy all the small pleasures <laughs> yes agree more of that <laughs> awesome thank you so much Jessica. thank you thank you so much for listening to the whole and unleashed podcast what was your takeaway from today's conversation let me know in the comments or review I would love to hear from you. Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com for more information.